Good morning and welcome. Thank you all for coming out this morning. Um, you should have all gotten a strip of paper. If you have not gotten a strip of paper, anyone? All right, good, good. Because um, we are going to be using those. We are going to have an activity today. Uh, but first, let me start by saying that uh, Karen and I, yes, we are both at Virginia Mili Military Institute. However, we're also part of an organization called Simiode, which is a fledgling online community dedicated to teaching differential equations with the idea of motivating the course through modeling. Um, so today, we're going to have an actual outbreak in class um, of math excitus, which is terminal. Um, you can't be cured once you love math, you never go back. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about model development, why we are talking about doing this in a differential equations course, and then talk about the goals of your particular course, as well as some possible opportunities and directions for, for where you can go with this. So. Um, with your strip of paper, there are stations around the room. I've intentionally put them on sort of tables where people didn't look like they were sitting, or at least not too many were sitting. So you can leave your stuff where it is. Um, but get up, and where it says round one, I want you to go to that station that goes with it. So if you look at your strip of paper, round one starts right now. Stations one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You should have a number next to the state or next to your round. Okay, so we have three people in the room that are already sick. Hopefully you're already at your station. If you've come in late, make sure you get a strip of paper. Um, if there's anyone at your station who is sick, there are some pennies. Go ahead and flip a coin. It, so if I've told you you're sick, then you're sick. There are three people who are sick right now. Where are my sick people? All right, so that table over there, somebody might get infected over here. Wow, you don't get a chance to infect anyone. If there's someone at your table who is sick and you are healthy, I want you to go ahead and flip a coin right now. Otherwise, if there's no one sick at your table, that's okay. You can't get sick if you're not around anybody who's sick, right? So healthy folks who have flipped the coin, if it's heads up, Congratulations, you are now sick too. You have caught math excitus. Otherwise, not so much. Go ahead and make that around zero. We had three people yeah. sick. Now how many people do we have sick? You're still sick. How many back here? So one, two, three, four. How many sick back here? Five, six, seven. So go ahead and for round one, we have seven people sick. Go ahead and move to your next station, please. Again, remember if you are sick or not, when you get to the table, your new station, introduce yourself as sick or not sick. So the stations are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight around the edges of the room. All right, has everybody rolled or, or flipped? Yeah, you need to see if you're sick or not. Only flip if someone at your table is sick. Hmm? Heads is sick. Okay, how many sick over here? Three. How many sick? So two more, that's five. Any sick? Seven. Six. How many sick back? No one's sick. How about over here? Anybody sick? So seven, eight. Any? You're not sick yet. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Good job over there getting infected. 16. <laughs> All right, round three, go. Go to your new stations. <laughs> Only those that are not sick. Because you, you can't get sicker. But you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> All right, how many people over here are sick? Just one? Two. Two people sick here. Three, four, five, six, seven, six. 
In the back, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, sick. All right, round four. All right, everybody, everybody flipped. How about over here? Four people sick. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24. Did you check table five? In the back, are you good? You are fine so far, 25. 25. Yeah. All right, round five, go. Get it. Yeah. That's right. So hmm? Doing a good job of going back and forth. Yeah. Not sticking around on one side. All right. Start counting. You said you're all sick. That's four right there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-six. Go ahead and write it down. All right, we're not going to continue playing out this activity. Go ahead and take your seats again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to get you all excited about getting math excited. Those of you who didn't get infected today. I mean, you still might get infected and love math one day. <laughs> All right. So after running this sort of activity in my class, and this is something I do fairly early in the semester, um, we talk about, well, how would you model this? What kind of factors influence getting sick? And it turns out that it's a little bit easier to model the rate at which people are getting sick, which motivates the whole idea of differential equations, right? There's a lot of things where it's easier to measure the rate that something's changing than to actually measure the thing itself. Um, and so that motivates why we're using differential equations in the first place. And there's lots of ways that you can shape this discussion based on what your class um, what your class practices are. What is it that you want in terms of your classroom environment? So you might do guided inquiry and have some leading questions. You might do this in as a whole class discussion or you might have small group discussions. You might give them the ingredients and let them assemble. So giving them ideas about, you, know, you might sort of guide the discussion and get to okay, well, obviously, if there's no one sick at my table, at my station, I can't get sick. So what is the probability that a sick person runs into a not sick person? Um, and then what is the probability that I'm actually going to get sick if I am with a sick person? Um, or you can let them brainstorm those ingredients and then kind of help them put them together. Or just go completely, um, let them figure out the ingredients, and after you've kind of I strongly suggest guiding, or uh, after they have the ingredients, make sure that they really do have all the ingredients and, and talk about what is, what should be there, what shouldn't be there in terms of the model. Um, once they have this model, um, this gets into the ideas of discussions that you might have. Um, and I tend to do this through writing exercises where I want my students thinking about how to present their information. But questions like what factors influence the rate at which people get infected? So you could change the probability of infection. I mean, obviously with coins, we're sort of stuck with a 50-50. But you could use dice. You could use cards. You can use pass the pigs. There's lots of different ways that you can come up with, with ways to get people infected. Um, you can change the number of stations. You can change the initial number infected. I don't give my students these. I expect them to come up with these ideas. Um, asking them what's the significance of the inflection point when they look at that data. Um, how might the model differ from the data? And then which is right? And I get some very interesting responses to the which is right. There is no right answer to this question. It depends on what you're doing. If you're asking which one's the real data, well, clearly we did the experiment. That's the real data. Although I have gotten the answer of maybe we miscounted. 
and that's why the model is right. That's not a good answer, but, but it does happen. Um, and then easily, all of these can be explored qualitative numerically, or you can even introduce computer algebra systems. It depends on what your goals are for the course. Um, so why do this in differential equations? Well, first of all, there are tons of applications in a variety of fields. Um, so engineering, they're, they're all listed there. Biology, ecology, physiology, chemistry, physics, business, economics. We've even found some applications in the humanities. So um, in terms of differential equations being a service course, because I know at a lot of places it is, it's an opportunity to show non-math majors what the value of math is. No longer should differential equations be a course that you just have to take because you have to take it, just like you have to take English or something else. It should seem relevant. Um, and you can use it to show depth in a field or broadly across. But also for math majors, whether it's pre-service teachers or industry-bound mathematicians, let's face it, most of our math majors aren't going to become us. They're going to go out there and they're going to do something else with mathematics. They're not just going to be coming back and teaching mathematics and doing research on rings and strings and things. Um, so it's a chance to really show our math majors the actual authentic applications of mathematics. So this gives an idea of why you would do it in a differential equations course, but now I invite you to think about your differential equations course. Um, one last thing, I guess, going back to the activity that we've just done. Um, after I do an activity like that with my students, uh, if it's possible, I try to point them to specific papers that are current in the literature, and there's an awful lot of disease modeling right now. Um, and I told them they could make a lot of money. I don't know if you guys saw, there was like some million dollar prize for if you could predict chicken yunga uh, um, disease spread. Did you see that? That's pretty cool. Um, so I was like, so the reason that you want to take my class is so that you can make a million dollars, certainly. Um, but so in terms of adapting this sort of um, method, approach, if you will, in your own class, um, you have to think about the constraints of your own class. So a lot of times, um, you know, a differential equations class is a service course. And um, in particular, for ABET accreditation and engineering schools, you need to make sure you've sort of checked the boxes. Um, so there may be things um, that you have to do, and some of those things may, and then there's things that you want to do, and then there's some sort of fine line in between. Um, but this is highly adaptable, and I think it can work for all of them. So if what you want to or need to cover is analytic solution techniques for solving differential equations, then I think using the modeling as this um, front, you know, this upfront piece where you're like, okay, we have this scenario and now we need to build this model. Well, now we have this differential equation. Now we have this system that's in symbols. And so now we can use those symbols um, and do that analytic solution technique. And then at the end, you can kind of bring it back and say, okay, so now we have the solution. What sorts of things can we say about that? Um, and uh, so maybe that goes down to that qualitative understanding. Um, so you, there's qualitative understanding you can talk about with the differential equation itself, or if you've done that analytic solution where you've you know, come up with the solution and, and talking about um, what are, how, how do you expect the disease to propagate? Um, does that make sense in terms of what your solution told you? Um, so, so tying those things together and having it attached to a real application makes a big difference. Um, technology is something that, it, that I value a lot for my students to learn about. Um, I, I try and get them away from that graphing calculator if I can. <laughs> like, no one in the real world is using a graphing calculator, so let's get used to using the, the technology that's out there, and this is a perfect place to do that. Um, I've used an awful lot of spreadsheets, actually. Um, so it can be very accessible to people just using Excel. Um, although this, again, is something that's highly adaptable. Um, one of our colleagues very much uses um, CAS technology. So he'll get them to the point where they have a differential equation and he's like, I, could, I don't care at all about how we're getting to the solution. I'm gonna use the technology to give us a solution and then we can do all the sorts of qualitative things with the solution. Um, I like the numerical stuff. I want for them to get used to programming stuff in MATLAB or some other uh, language, so I'll often have them use some sort of numerical method. Um, and so I think that, but keeping that modeling piece forward so that they have the motivation to want to know what that answer is is, um, is pretty important. Um, other things that are important to me, and these are sort of maybe the secondary goals of my course, so there's the like, what's the content goals, and but these are the, the 20-year 
right? These are all the 20 year things that we want our students to take away. Um, so with an activity like this or with some other activity, if I uh, assign it as a project, um, I often have them report their results as a letter to an audience, right? So when you get a job, probably you're gonna have an audience. You've gotta to report to your boss, you've gotta report, you know, to if you're a consultant, you're reporting to someone. So you need to not only just express the mathematics in a way that's understandable to a math instructor, you need to report it in a way that's convincing to someone outside of your field. So there's some sort of uh, customer. Um, and encouraging students to work together and individually, those are all things that, you know, that those are on those, that list of things I want my students to do. Um, if you, uh, you know, in terms of group dynamics, I think there's something you can do like Pogol where you, you assign different roles within a group and they can get used to those leadership opportunities. Um, so you can change your assignments and tailor those to address all of those goals too. Yeah, I mean, so, for example, I really focus on leadership because I'm at a military school, so I will put them into groups that I'm pretty sure won't work um, just to force them to figure out how to make it work and become a better leader. You might not want to do that at your school, though. That might not be your focus. You might want things to be more smooth sailing. You might want them to pick their own. But there's lots of information about group choices out there. Just make it intentionally, whatever you do. Um, so. In general, I, I think including modeling in your differential equations course, super important. Highly encourage you to do that or uh, consider thinking about those sorts of things. Um, it can facilitate uh, the content goals that you want and also those 20 year, like how do I want my student to develop? It can facilitate both of those. Um, in terms of what are the modeling scenarios, so we just did sort of one with you, um, but you can find many more on that Simeo website, simeo.org. Um, and if you join the teachers group, you can get access to not only what are the student materials, but what are sort of the um, teacher materials that go along with it. So um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of. Notes and, and guidance for you as an guidance. instructor to run the activities. What does work, what doesn't work. And it's free. So um, you can go on there and get in, involved. Um, and we have a workshop, the MAA prep workshop in uh, Helena, Montana this summer in July. So you so, uh, may have closed the deadline to get into the prep workshop, but if you contact us, pull some strings if you're interested. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email us or visit us at simeo.org.